Recently, I got a question emailed to me asking, why would a man, why would an educated man use a woman? And I thought to myself, what does education have to do with using someone? I mean, how does that work to someone's education? I think it's because we have this belief that people who are more educated are more genuine, that people are educated are more sincere, okay? We, we kind of feel that same way with attractive people. There's this belief system that if someone is attractive, they're more of a quality candidate to be in relationship. So today I want to lean into the real truth as to, well, a truth, okay, of why a woman might get used by a man. And I think the standard, the, the, the most common narrative with respects to being used by people centers around narcissists. That tends to be the number one reason why men and women seem to be using one another because they are narcissists, okay? Now, it's interesting because this morning my sweetheart was sharing with me a list of traits that are narcissistic. And I kept saying, well, I checked that box and I checked that box and I checked that box. I didn't check all nine or 10 boxes listed, but I checked off a few of the boxes. Um, and, and I share this because we all have on some level selfish traits. We all have some self-centered traits. We all have that. It's just kind of human nature. In fact, in the dating realm, most people are rather myopic and myopic is kind of tunnel visioned, okay, tunnel vision, or they're self-centric because we start from self. We start from that place of wanting to have our own needs met. So it, it seems to stand to reason why people get called narcissistic when they're in a relationship with someone and they're only focused on their own needs, okay? But think about it. When you're on a date, are you focused about his needs or are you focused on your own needs? It's a very natural human thing. And yet, once again, the term narcissist gets thrown about. And yes, there are some people who are narcissists. There are some people who are completely devoid of empathy. There are people who don't apologize for their actions. There are people that will turn everything around and make it your fault instead of taking ownership on their own part. So yes, that's a true thing that can happen. All right. But at the same time, being used is oftentimes comes from a place of victim consciousness versus victor consciousness, okay? Victim consciousness says somebody did something that wronged me, okay? That's victim consciousness. Victor consciousness is this experience happened in my life and this is what I learned about myself from this experience. When you can actually come at it from a place of how, what positive things did I learn about myself in this experience, we have a greater chance to be attracting in our lives, those who are more aligned to who we are and what we want. So today we have to talk about being used because I want everyone to differentiate between a short-term mating strategy versus a long-term mating strategy. That's right. A short-term mating strategy versus a long-term mating strategy. Okay. Why do I call it a strategy? Because the reality is, is with, listen, I'm going to pull up my phone. With these devices, we are now, we because of our smartphones and access to people we wouldn't otherwise meet in our daily lives, many people, men and women, have a short-term strategy. In other words, they only are seeking to have a good time. And the internet has certainly amplified what's now known as the hookup culture. And these days, many are people are experiencing very short-lived relationships where there is physical intimacy with one another without any deeper dive into a real serious relationship. So if you have a long-term mating strategy, you operate differently. And what I mean by operate differently, especially if you're a woman, you are doing a better job of vetting this person. You're vetting if and vetting means screening, it means filtering, it means establishing, do we share the same values? 
Are our lifestyles blendable with one another? And more importantly, is this person emotionally mature enough to be in relationship? And as that woman asked me earlier, how can a highly educated man use a woman? The reality is, is intelligence doesn't equal relationship success. Attractiveness doesn't equal relationship success. If you want some, if you really want to learn and understand about vetting, check out a free discovery call with me. There's a link right here. You can go to the link below, jonathanasley.com forward slash coaching to schedule a call with me because my area of expertise is all designed to help you learn how to vet for compatibility and more importantly, how to vet for emotional maturity. Because the reality is, is most people these days in the dating marketplace have a short-term mating strategy. And men are, I'm going to be candid with you, men have this fantasy, not fantasy, a delusion or a lack of awareness, understanding that chemistry doesn't equal relationship success. Okay. Chemistry doesn't equal relationship success. Men often focus on chemistry as their indicator for relationship success without truly, not all men, most men, without truly understanding the importance of compatibility as I shared with you. So, what are men seeking? Companionship, connection, sex. That's the short-term mating strategy. A long-term mating strategy is companionship, connection, sex, and commitment. And I think it's important to unpack this. What is companionship? Well, somebody to do stuff with. That's companionship, to go to dinners, to go you know, sailing, to go play pickleball, to do things with somebody else to go to dinner parties, to go to family gatherings so you can have a companion. That's a basic human need to want companionship. Connection. Reality is, is human beings are thirsty for connection, whether it's romantic connection or just even community in their life, family and friends. It's, it's important need to want to have connection with someone, to be able to be vulnerable, to be authentic, to be transparent with a person. Sex. Well, what's the point of being in a romantic relationship if you can't have sex together? That's a driving force. We men biologically are driven more so by sex, not to say women aren't any less um, appreciate sex. I'm just saying, but we oftentimes we're, we're so conditioned to spread our seed that it's not about commitment. It's about the sex. And that last piece of commitment says, I want you in my life for much longer than a short-term strategy. I want to build trust with you. I want to I, I want to care about your feelings as much as you care about your own feelings. I want to have my have your best interest at heart when I'm operating throughout the day and I don't mean operating like a surgeon the way I operate through life. Commitment people who have a long-term mating strategy operate differently. And yet today, most people have a short-term mating strategy. And their short-term mating strategy is because of this shocking truth. And I want to read something I wrote for everybody. So bear with me. I said, loneliness is one of the leading causes. Loneliness is one of the leading causes. And the internet has amplified this abuse. Men do it and women do, it. women do it. Because of the internet, humans have access to more people than ever in history. Because now you can meet people in the privacy of your own home, meaning you don't have to get out in the real world to connect with someone. And these days, women are falling for cyber relationships because they are also lonely. In addition, COVID amplified our desire for connection because the reality is, is for many people, we don't have a physical tribe or more importantly, an emotional tribe to support us in this ever-changing need for community and connection. See, the shocking truth why you might get used or why a man may only have a short-term mating strategy is because he desperately wants connection with someone. We humans, are there's a vast majority of humans that are lonely and they just want to connect with someone. 
And maybe they might want commitment, but they don't even know how to be in a committed relationship. They don't know how to be a grown up in relationship. If you're not familiar with the book, where is it? Oh, oh, here it is. How to be an adult in relationship. People can want companionship, connection, and sex. They even might want commitment, but they don't know how to be in a committed relationship. So they have a short-term mating strategy, believing that if you're with the right person, magic fairy dust will make it all work out because magic fairy dust always makes things work out. Folks, we are swimming in a sea of dysfunctionality. The vast majority of humans that are in the dating marketplace are rather dysfunctional. And while a small percentage are users, 60% or more are dysfunctional and very few have done the inner work to actually be what I call a grower and a builder. So what did I write? Oh, and I wrote the only reason why this is shocking is that there are so many stories about how bad men are. Men, and, and I'm here to say men aren't evil. Humans are flawed. And worse, the lack of community will be the downfall of our society. So don't be fooled or become jaded because most men are good guys. They are simply hurting on the inside. I can speak from personal experience because after my divorce, I was a damaged, I was a train wreck. I was lonely and I wanted companionship, connection, and sex. And these devices created a portal to connect with people all over the world practically. This is why so many of you are being hooked to cyber relationships. So I, I just got an email or um, I saw a post in my YouTube channel, a comment saying one of her friends for six months was engaged in a cyber relationship with a man. And right the week before they were supposed to meet, he had an emergency and he needed money. And she wired him $25,000 and she never heard from him again. Folks, cyber, by the way, if you do not schedule a FaceTime with any long distance person, and if you are communicating with someone for over 30 days and you haven't physically seen them through FaceTime, run, Forrest, run. And anybody who says they can't do it is a crock of, everybody has on their device WhatsApp. If he's speaking to you on a phone, unless he's speaking to you on a landline, and he doesn't, I mean, if, if every, almost 90% of, well, a significant percentage of the human population, especially here in the United States, has access to the internet. They can send, they can do FaceTime with you. They can do WhatsApp with you. So don't believe that rhetoric. But what's the truth? Humans are lonely. And in that loneliness, we oftentimes operate from a selfish place, not a narcissistic place, but a self-centric place because we are swimming in a sea of such dysfunctionality and the emotional maturity of humans and their relationship skills are incredibly poor. This is why I wrote my book, What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway? A Journey of Personal Development, Self-Help and Spiritual Work. By the way, in the description, in the show notes, you can get a copy of, you can order my book. All the books I recommend are listed. But we have a distressing lack of self-love because the number one emotional health issue we are most everyone is facing is I'm not good enough, I'm not lovable, and I'm not likable. Think about that. And dating triggers that like nobody's business. You know, most men, you have this, ex a lot of women have expectations. By the way, men can be jackasses, so let me be clear. But what I'm about to say is women have this expectation that men are supposed to be chivalrous and, and alpha and, and perfect. They know exactly what they're doing and they take the lead. And so you can just sit in your feminine energy. Most men are good guys. They're just bad daters. But guess what? A lot of those good men that you might have rejected in the past, they make the best candidate to be in relationship. And the reality is, is these days, our lack of community is going to be the downfall because we feel very alone, men and women alike. Can you relate to this? Can you relate to feeling alone? If you do, please write down, Jonathan, I can relate to feeling alone. And can you understand that Men might feel this way too. And it might mean that they don't know how to be in relationship, but it doesn't mean that they're bad people. And if we start to believe 
the opposite is sex is bad for us, then we're never going to attract the kind of relationship we want for those heterosexual relationships. Let me be clear. So the shocking truth, loneliness is one of the leading causes for people to feel like they got used because the person who wants that connection isn't capable of anything deeper. And this is why I invite you to do a better job of vetting, of screening, of filtering in the early stages so you can attract in a person that can actually lead you to having a fully fulfilled long-term relationship. Is this sinking in? Is this resonating? Please let me know if it is. Please hit that like button. Please share this video. Please subscribe to my channel. Again, check out the links below to a discovery call with me to my group called Midlife Love Mastery. You can join the membership group here. You can follow me on Instagram and get all the copies of the books I recommend.